This is the Music and Mental Health Podcast with Theology and DJ Fat Lane. What is going on, world? Welcome to the Music and Mental Health Podcast, episode 21. On this edition of the podcast, we have music from the likes of Boshi, Hanabi, Vector U, The Limit Breakers, and myself. Later on in the discussion portion, I'm going to be airing a couple of interviews that I have been in lately, or at least that have been released lately. I recently made it in the news in Minneapolis. Uh, KFAI did a story about me and video game music, and it's just crazy. Uh, What an honor to make news in my hometown. Uh, And... Also, I was recently interviewed on a Canadian radio show called Square Wave, so I'll be airing portions of these interviews today. Uh, They do align with the mental health message, and I'm very excited for you to hear them. But first, to kick off the podcast, here's a little Pokemon Black and White, Summer by the Seaside in Undela Town, the Hanabi and Chiri Sinchino, I think that's how you say it? Remix. <laughs> Enjoy. Sigue gozando, manos arriba.
you just heard my remix of Chill from Dr. Mario. That hasn't been played on the podcast yet, so I thought I would give it a go. Before that, you heard Boshi and Lucas G with Bob on Battlefield from Super Mario 64. Up next is one of my favorite songs I've produced lately. This is Mystic Invasion from Secret of Mana, Theology Remix. Enjoy. single gig lately because it's absolutely epic. Here is Boshi's Bass House remix of Inside a House from The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask.
the Takafumi Imamura remix of Alexander's theme from Final Fantasy XIV. That's called Rise. Up next is a track that I did as a commission for Bugcap 2023. Thank you for your support, my friend. This is a song called Timed from a game called Horde, which is very rare and obscure, but it's a great track nonetheless. Thank you, Adriana Lake, for your production. And here is my remix. Enjoy.
That was mine and Ian Martin's remix of Hymn of the Faith from Final Fantasy X. And up next is a crazy deep cut. This is from a game called Riven. This is my remix of the Moy TH theme. Enjoy. Music and Mental Health Podcast. Thank you. 
heard my remix of Chicago Stealth from Perfect Dark, and before that was Vector U's remix of The Princess Secret Slide from Super Mario 64. And before that, I don't really know how to credit this track, but it was sent to me by Silent Antagonist. So, Big Lost Woods Papa, the Silent Antagonist mashup, it is. Up next, we've got a little game groups for you. This is my remix of the Astral Observatory theme from Majora's Mask. Enjoy.
collabing with the Limit Breakers. They are incredible. We've got more later coming, but for now, that was our remix of the Crystal Cave theme from Yoshi's Island. And up next, here's Ultra Loy's remix of The Mysterious Woods from The Legend of Zelda, Link's Awakening. Enjoy. This is the Music and Mental Health Podcast. I started the podcast with some Hanabi, so why not end it with some Hanabi? This is him, Trevor, and Tanoshi with their cinematic chill step remix of The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom's main theme. Enjoy. that's all I've got for you for the music. Now, first, please enjoy my interview with KFAI here in Minneapolis. And next, enjoy my interview with the Square Wave in Winnipeg.
This is Mini Culture on KFAI. If you are someone who plays video games, you probably have at least a couple of game soundtracks that you love, or at least a couple that always get stuck in your head. Video game music, or VGM, is a genre of music that is now taking off, even outside of traditional gaming platforms. KFAI's Madeline Carita Fleming spoke with Theology Music, a local VGM artist, about their work and about the genre. When anyone under the age of 50 hears, It's me, Mario! We know exactly what you're talking about. Or the sound of getting the rings knocked out of you, the color of Sonic's shoes, or falling off the rainbow road because someone had it out for you with a big blue shell. And then there's the words, Sega! This is Theology, a.k.a. Matthew Bentley, a video game remix EDM DJ and producer. Matthew is electric on stage, igniting the same energy throughout the entire concert hall. My favorite song I've produced, uh, that would be my Chrono Trigger, Secret of the Forest remix. Secret of the Forest, the original from Chrono Trigger, it's the most beautiful song I've ever heard. Theology Music is the perfect name for one of the prophets of the genre that is quietly beginning its genesis as a worldwide phenomenon. VGM for short, otherwise known as video game music. I remember my brother handed me a Tiesto album, In Search of Sunrise uh, 5, Los Angeles, and I was blown away by how beautiful every song was, but also how they all blended together because it was a DJ mix. I'd never heard anything like it, and uh, I knew from then on that I wanted to make music like that. Recently, two-time Grammy Award-winning Stephen Lee Bruner, better known as Thundercat, sat down with us and shared his thoughts on video game music. Like Super Mario and Zelda, Contra, or like Sonic the Hedgehog. It's one of those things that's like the note choices and stuff like that. They're so important in certain moments, you know, and I don't think they should, I don't ever think they should be washed over in just the nuances of how we do stuff now where it's like it could be cool. But that's what makes a video game amazing. This last Mario Kart was fantastic. Soundtrack was amazing. The VGM scene expands its reach far from American shores. I'll sit in the middle of a crowded city and feed off the energy of the people. That's really what I like to do. I name a lot of my original music after people because people inspire me and I really, really, really like meeting new people. Theology recently played 2D Con in Minneapolis. 2D Con is a gaming event. At 2D Con, Theology shares the stage with similar artists. The master of unlocking. Drummer Matt Brewer shares his views on the love of the genre. Like, this is a legitimate thing. It is. And I just want to make have more people know that. It's a lot of fun. Masters of Unlocking drove up from Texas for 2D Con in Minneapolis and were surprised to meet so many similar artists. Video game music has taken theology all over the world from the Netherlands to Tokyo. Uh, I remember this one night I, uh, I was in Tokyo and I decided, you know what, I'm going to get lost and I'm going to walk the streets, not know where I am. And I'm going to listen to this song on repeat. And that's one of the fond, most fond memories of my entire life because of how nostalgically that hit me. And I still sometimes watch videos of people walking around Japan, uh, just because I kind of want to relive that moment. As a new artist... Theology is a jolt of electricity, positivity. All are invited to take part and explore in his philosophy. One message I'd give to my fans would be uh, probably just keep fostering love. Um, Because literally life is meaningless without love. And don't try to get caught up in the crap of life. Um, I know that sounds super hippie, hunky-dory, but it's true. Love never fails. And... If that is the kind of energy that you're giving out, you're going to attract that kind of energy in return. For KFAI, I'm Madeline Carita Fleming. You've been listening to Mini Culture on KFAI. Support for Mini Culture on KFAI has been provided by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund. For more stories like this, check out the Mini Culture tab on the KFAI website at kfai.org slash m-i-n-n-e-c-u-l-t-u-r-e.
Welcome to Square Wave on CKUW 95.9 FM. I am your host, Dustin Rogers, and today on the program, I'll be speaking with the DJ, producer, and mental health activist known as Theology. He recently came to Winnipeg to perform at the Rec Room. Uh, We met there, and I was lucky enough to get a recording of his entire set from that night. And that recording is what we're going to be listening to for the first 30 minutes of the show today. And stay tuned for the back half of the hour, because... I will have an interview between Theology and myself where we'll delve into the connection between mental health and video game music, along with so much more. It's another episode of Square Wave on CKUW 95.9 FM in Winnipeg. All right, and without further ado, folks, give it up all the way from the U.S. of A, Theology! If you're just joining the show this hour, we have a very special guest. Uh, His name is Theology. He's a DJ and producer and a mental health activist who remixes video game music into his own original compositions and uh, when when he performs to create just outstanding experiences for everybody who's there in the room. Uh, Theology, thank you for coming on the show with me today. My absolute pleasure. Thank you for asking me. Yeah, well, it was something that when I heard about that you were coming to Winnipeg, I really felt that it was something I wanted to make sure I was there uh, part of. And we're going to get into that in a little bit. But first, I introduce you as a DJ, producer, and mental health activist. Is this correct? Yes. Um, yeah, I've uh, <clears throat> introduced myself as many things over my 16-year career of uh, DJing and producing. But as of late, that is it. Your goal, and you've told me this, and it's also there on your website, theologymusic.com, your goal is to activate God mode within your audience. Can you tell me a bit more about what you mean by that? What do you mean when you say you want to activate God mode within your audience? Yeah, so uh, that's sort of a culmination of open vulnerability, progression, and healing. That's what it means to me, at least. It could probably mean different things to different people, but that's at least how I mean it. I try to use the video game remixes as a nostalgic gateway to sort of create an atmosphere of healing uh, because I believe firmly that video game music heals. I want to talk to you about this connection between video game music and healing, um, especially as it relates to mental health. Can you tell me what that connection is to you? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, It manifests itself in many different ways. Uh, But I think one of the biggest examples that I can give you is there is a song on Uh, Donkey Kong Country 2. It's called Sticker Bush Symphony by David Wise. He's the original composer of that song. And the most viewed video of that on YouTube, it's literally just the background of the level. It's the song. And the comment section is full of people being raw and real and sharing their struggles sharing their triumphs, sharing their woes. And there's this whole discussion around what people are going through and whether people are giving advice or just saying, hey, I'm here and, uh, you know, I I can relate to you and I hope you overcome your struggle. Uh, There's a lot going on there. It's, It's definitely something special that I would take a look at if I were you at some point. Um. This is just one example of the power that VGM has. And why is it that it's a video of a song from a video game that brings this out in people? You know, many people could say different things. I think it's because there is this just energy that the song gives off. It's, a, it's an energy of, of hope. And I think people really resonate with it, whether they know it or not, subconsciously or consciously. So that's one example. I could give more, but I feel like that one is a pretty powerful one. One of the one of the concepts that we talked about in April was this idea around nostalgia. And you'd mentioned that the nostalgia sort of is like a bridge to this time in someone's life when... Perhaps they were maybe more vulnerable or they were 
um, maybe more raw or less sort of refined. Maybe those emotions were closer to the surface. Yeah. Fewer responsibilities you mentioned, definitely being younger or being a kid um, and trying to figure out so much of life. How does that nostalgia piece play into the connection that you see between mental health and video game music? Yeah, well, in order to move forward mental health-wise, you have to have a sense of openness uh, where you come to a place in your life where you're like, yeah, this is off or this could be improved or you know, this is good, but I can always do better. You have to come to this sense of openness where you're willing to change, right? And I just think that the the childlike state, so to speak, that this music can put people in and that I've seen it put people in and have experienced myself being put into this childlike state of like, you know, like you were saying, like, yeah, no responsibilities, much less uh, <laughs> of, of the woes of life were on you you know, back when you were a child or, or even if you did have a a rough childhood, maybe you had video games and that was your escape. Like that's what made you escape reality and, and not think about what was going on. Um, I, I, I believe that, uh, this, this sort of state of vulnerability is something that we can all tap into. Now, I'm also very much an advocate for balance, right? So though my DJ sets are full of this kind of material and I'm constantly typing messages to the crowd of like, you can do it, you can overcome. Uh, there's also balance, right? There, Not every song is like that. Uh, some just are, you know, some songs I play just for nostalgia's sake. Some songs are meme songs, you know, they're meant to make you laugh, Um And some drops that I have in my sets are incredibly hard and nasty, and they're meant to sort of uh, represent the other side of the emotional spectrum, right? Because I believe that when there is a well-rounded, holistic approach to emotion, uh, the most healing comes that way. When I saw you perform at Retro that took place on... April 18th, 2023 at the rec room uh, was presented by bonus stage. You had a huge screen behind you. You mentioned there that you shared stories or that you shared important messages or messages about telling people that they're worth it, that they're valued, that they're important and that they deserve to be um, cherished. Uh, But you also shared some funny stories, some things that I really enjoyed. And I think it's a really special show, something that you can really bring that does find that bridge and it does make those connections between the video game music that we remember and sort of who we've become. Now, speaking of who we've become, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about how you got started with the video game music remixes. I know that you started, I think, first with uh, working in EDM and uh, different mm-hmm. styles of electronic dance music yep. in the mid twenty or 2000s, around 2006, as I recall. And then it wasn't until 2009, 2010 that you began doing video game music remixes. And your first one... I have it as a note that you did a remix for Dire Dire Docks, which actually does yeah. remind me a little bit of Sticker Brush Symphony. Yeah, 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 totally. It's it's kind of got similar energy. Now, you said it wasn't your best ever. I mean, that's 15 years ago almost. Um, but then you were mentored by some mainstream trance artists. Can you tell me a bit about that period, who those artists were, what they mentored you through or how they worked, uh, how they were able to shape the music that you create today? Yeah, absolutely. Man, this this will be me talking for a while, so buckle up. Uh, yeah, I made that remix of Dire Dire Docs with my friend Kevin. I didn't really know what I was doing production-wise back then because I was basically self-taught. And, you know, back in that day, there weren't countless YouTube tutorials on how to make your sound super professional, right? So I just kind of rolled with the punches and uh, hoped that the next song I made sounded better, right? Uh, But it wasn't until I was trying to sort of climb the totem pole or the ladder of the mainstream trance scene uh, where I was connected with some really powerful people. So it all started when I decided to take Jason Ross's masterclass. Uh, Jason is signed to Anjuna Beats, which is above and beyond's record label. Uh, They're pretty huge trance DJs out of England, and that's sort of kind of where most of my influence lies. I took a master class from him where I ended up meeting a guy named uh, Brian, 
who goes by Prophetic, or at least he used to. Uh, he sort of quit producing music to pursue a career in tech. Uh, but Brian and I made a song together that Above and Beyond actually played on their radio show uh, called Group Therapy. It was episode 245. Uh, we made a song called Soul Dreamer and it got played and it was one of the greatest accomplishments of my entire life. But that sort of got me connected into uh, the scene. Um, <clears throat> my my track getting played on ABGT is what I consider my nominal success in the mainstream trance scene. Uh, but from there, I got to know Daniel Davis from Fatum, uh, a guy known as JTech, also... Austin Mayer, um, and these are all people who are on the Anjuna Beats label, which Above and Beyond runs. So Daniel definitely impacted me the most as far as teaching me production. Uh, him and a guy named Mario Aguito, who goes by Mayon, uh, he also very much impacted me. I remember it was the mutual connection with uh, Brian and Mario, and that's the reason I was able to even talk to him in the first place. And I'd been listening to Mayan songs since I was in high school. Like, <laughs> it goes way back. And I remember I I hit him up, and I was like, hey, uh, you should give me private lessons. And he's like, yeah, sounds good. And since you know Brian, I'll even give you a deal. And I was like, wow, that's really cool. Uh, I ended up actually going to his place in Zagad, Hungary, where he taught me a lot of things that I was doing wrong. He showed me things I was doing wrong, I should say, uh, in my projects. And after I was done with my lessons with Mayan is kind of when my sound became what it is today. Uh, his simplistic approach to production sort of changed everything that I was doing. And uh, now I now I swear by that. I live by that. You know, I'd been making video game remixes for years, and it wasn't until uh covid kind of hit actually that i made this album called trapped in a world between beauty and bass i had three video game remixes on there and i sent a pre-release copy of the album to my brother and he goes matt your video game remixes are insane you should just focus on that and i was like all right and coincidentally a guy that I used to serve at the old restaurant that I worked at, Thomas, hit me up and was like, hey, uh, you should play at this con that I am that I run. And it was VGM Con uh, in Minneapolis. So I did a set where I pre-recorded what I was doing, uh, the video and the audio, uh, because I'd never live streamed in my life. <laughs> and uh, yeah, uh, I don't know. The rest is kind of history because that was really sort of how I got plugged in. But yeah, it, it all culminated in a really beautiful and awesome way. So I guess that's that's probably the data you need to know. <laughs> that's amazing. Now, the VGM Con, you did attend VGM Con this year in 2023, correct? I did, yeah. I played main stage uh, and it was probably the best set that I have ever done. It was It was incredible. That one was with live musicians, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I had um, an ocarina and a flute player join me. I had uh, Gunderslam, who's a metal guitarist, join me. And then Ian Cowell. Oh, my gosh, he shreds on the guitar as well. Uh, yeah, they, they all joined me during different songs. And I don't know, there's just something really special about those moments that were created. If you want to see that video, it's it's on my YouTube channel, and I'm slowly releasing clips on my TikTok as we speak. I'm so glad that they, your friend, your brother, recommended to you to focus on the video game music remixes because the way that you weave the sound effects, yes, but definitely the video game music too, in with the EDM is just so special. I love that you don't just sample these games just to make your own compositions that much brighter. You really put the music front and center. You can tell that, you know, when you're performing, that you hear the video game music clearly and that you really are trying to tap into those those memories that are hard-coded into so many of us with that nostalgia piece. And then the positive messages on the screen behind you bring it all together and remind you of what really is tying this all together. And it's all that mental health piece. Totally. Um, I want to talk to you a bit about what is the VGM fam. Yeah, uh, the VGM fam 
is the community that I met once I was sort of thrust into this world, into this ethosphere. And they're incredible. They're some of the most talented musicians I've ever met in my entire life who don't have an ego. Um, <laughs> and that's really hard to find. People who can just absolutely slay and shred and who have like, you know, for instance, like Vector U, uh, one of my biggest heroes, one of my biggest inspirations in not only EDM, but in VGM. Dude has like 25K subs on YouTube. Uh, I hit him up on Twitter through a DM and I was like, hey man, uh, wanna collab? And he was like, yeah. He's like, I hear your stuff. Like, you're good. Let's go. Didn't matter that I had, I don't know, like 700 subs at the time. He was just that open to doing it, right? And that's a very, very, very common thing throughout our community. Uh, I tend to do the hashtag VGM fam because... Uh, it's just, it's another way to foster a sense of community. One of the pieces that you had mentioned when we previously met was that so many people who grew up playing video games maybe were also not having the best experience growing up. Maybe they right. have had those kinds of moments where they've been on the receiving end of, say, jokes, bullying, what have oh, you. Yeah. And then the long lasting effect of those uh, maybe building up over time can let people feel that they're worth less than they are. And I really thought that was a really resonant message. And especially for the community of video game fans, I think that mental health is an underserved piece of, of the puzzle and something that doesn't get talked about enough. And that's one of the reasons that I think the connection that you draw between those two things is so important. Absolutely. Um, I'm, I'm glad you see it that way because that's exactly how I want it to be portrayed, right? I don't want this to be like a gimmick that I'm just doing to like gain clout or gain fans or followers. No, no, no. Like I genuinely want to help people and I've always wanted to help people through my music. But before when I was in the mainstream trance scene, it, I don't know, like if you're one of those people who can feel music and you understand where a composer or a musician is coming from just with how the music sounds and how the vibrations hit you. That's cool, but not everybody can do that. Right. And so it's amazing to have sort of a narrative that's surrounding these songs. Like for instance, if I drop anything from the legend of Zelda, I can talk about the heroic triumphs of link and how he never gave up. Right. I can do that in so many games. I can use that as an example and it can relate, right? The audience can grab onto that and hold on to that and be like, yeah, okay, like I can do that, right? Like I controlled the character to do it. Like why not just be awesome in real life, you know? Um, and, you know, if if nobody else is telling people that they're enough and that they can overcome and they can do it, I I want them to hear it from me, you know? And then uh, one thing that I'm very excited about that I've sort of kind of hinted to on Twitter, but I guess I'll officially announce it here. Uh, starting July, I am going to be doing a YouTube series. Uh, so I guess I'm going to be creating content and I'm putting that in air quotes. Uh, <laughs> but uh, this content will be uh, centered around video games and mental health. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to explore the storylines of some of these video games, you know, like ones that are in like Final Fantasy, uh, Persona, Zelda, etc. I'm going to examine these storylines and I'm going to grab pieces out of them and we're going to have a discussion around mental health. I have the script done for my first one. Uh, it's just going to be kind of in general overview at this point where I talk about how video games are the only medium, at least that I can think of, uh, I could be wrong, but that combine beauty and art, storytelling, problem solving, and incredibly beautiful music. And I'm literally putting like scholarly research into it. Uh, so it's kind of, it's kind of awesome. I really actually liked school and I liked writing papers. So it's kind of fun to flex that muscle again, but in a way that's actually going to help people, right? instead of just uh, writing monotonous papers. So <laughs> uh, yeah, those are some of the things that I'm really excited about. And I, of course, have my monthly The Music and Mental Health podcast where I showcase uh, the latest and greatest in VGM 
And then I have a mental health discussion afterwards with DJ Fat Rain, who is my life coach. And we interview people or sometimes we just talk amongst ourselves. Uh, but in the June episode, we're actually, uh, we have a real therapist uh, for the first time that we interviewed and the interview went swimmingly. So uh, yeah, th- those are some of the things that uh, you should definitely check out if you want to keep up more with what I'm doing. That is incredible, by the way. The work that's going on that you're doing is so important. And I think that it's a great opportunity for people to uh, to see, I think, the cutting edge of this intersection between video game music and mental health and, and video games at, at large, too. Certainly with the YouTube channel that you're talking about starting there. Yeah. Uh, I want to ask, what is it like after your shows? People come up to you. What do they say to you? Because <laughs> I remember coming up to you and saying, this was mind-blowingly good. Like, I was so blown away <laughs> by the performance. The music was incredible. The messaging was just absolutely perfect. I loved what you had to say. It was funny. It was uplifting. What do <laughs> others say, and how does that make you feel? It's uh. It's it's pretty pretty much that energy usually. Uh, I, it's really rare that people will come up to me and be like, "Oh, that sucked," and you know, if if they thought it, they didn't tell me. Uh, <laughs> which I don't know. Uh, that could be good or bad, but yeah, no, the energy is very positive, uh, especially in the VGM scene. So let me tell one last little metaphor. Uh, it'll, it won't take me that long. When I was in mainstream EDM, you there was this like unwritten rule uh, in the politics of the scene that if you were a trance DJ, you could only play trance. Maybe some house, but eh, it better not be too crazy of house. It better be more trancey. If you're a dubstep artist, you have to play dubstep and that's it. Uh, I don't think that's a good thing. I don't think it's good that audiences have classically conditioned themselves to only expect one genre. And so I make every single genre under the sun, hardcore trance house dubstep rhythm. I even have this slow trance style that I call future trance that I'm trying to pioneer myself. But uh, what's cool is that in the VGM scene, I'm allowed to play whatever I want. The genre does not matter. If people hear video game music and they resonate with the beat and the melodies, it doesn't matter. They are all about it. And so uh, this this freedom and this creativity for me to completely be myself is something that I cherish within this scene. And I feel like that makes my shows better because I'm actually being myself, right? And then adding in the mental health piece. Um, yeah, it, it, it really resonates with people. Um, one more thing, and then I will stop rambling. But man, this has been fun. Thank you again for having me. Uh, one of my biggest heroes is a guy named Stemage. He is in a band called Metroid Metal. And we sort of connected over Twitter, just, you know, sending messages back and forth. Uh, I DM'd him. I told him a long story about one of my best friends, Kevin, who introduced me to him in high school and uh, how Kevin was going to be at VGM Con. And he's like, yeah, I am too. I can't wait to meet him. And Stemage sought me out and introduced himself. And I was like, oh my gosh, you're like one of my biggest heroes and you are literally talking to me in the flesh like you sought me out i didn't have to look for you uh class act and that's just another example of how amazing the vgm fam is but uh he came up to me after my set at vgm con and by the way uh things got pushed way back and i think i stopped djing at like 3 30 just oh. because the schedule was behind <laughs> Yeah, it was bad, but <laughs> people stuck out and he was one of the people who came up to me after the set and was like, that was unbelievable. Like that moved me. And I, I, you know, I can't ask for anything more than that. One of my heroes literally telling me not only was he at my set, but that it moved him, you know? So yeah, it's, it's generally very positive and I'm just so grateful to be in this community because it's the best one I've ever been a part of. It's such an amazing feeling to bring people together like that. And your music really does th- do that theology. I want to say thank you very much for coming on my show. My pleasure. And before we go, I want to leave you with a quote that you left with me when we met in April. <laughs> and this resonates true, truly with the conversation we've had and the focus on mental health and really, I think, your music. It's that, quote, we can do so much more united than divided, unquote. 
And I think it's just such an important message to leave people with when they hear your music and remember that it's all about bringing people together and lifting one another up. Absolutely. Thank you very much for coming on the show, Theology. Yeah, thanks for having me, man. This is great. (laughs) Yeah, it's absolutely my pleasure. I'm sure we'll get to do it again one day soon. Uh, You're listening to Square Wave on CKW 95.9 FM in Winnipeg. Thank you for listening to today's episode of Square Wave, and a huge thank you to Theology for joining me today. I know this is a video game music history program, and that usually means I'm focused on the past, but video game music history is happening right now, too. And Theology's incredible music and his important mental health message put him in a class of its own. So make sure that you check out his music at theologymusic.com, and remember, you can stream episodes of Square Wave anytime from Spotify or the podcast app on your phone. Square Wave is written and hosted by me, Dustin Rogers. The show's theme was composed by Spaceman Fantastiques. Thanks again for listening and stay tuned for pages and many more great community radio programs right here on CKW 95.9 FM.